Hey everyone, it's LS, and this is going to be the patch 8.13 notes rundown. And for the first time in a while, this is a patch that I really hate to see. So we're just going to jump into it. Um, I'm really, really disappointed with a lot of stuff, and we're going to we're going to talk about that. Atrox is a champion that I did another video on, so you can check that out there. I won't be talking about Atrox in this video. Irelia, passive unhit damage decreased, passive attack speed increased, W damage decreased at lower stacks. Irelia have fallen into a bursty pattern than intended, which doesn't leave opponents much time to react. Yeah, if they're bad. We're pushing some of her damage into her basic attack, stacking her passive and charging her W, so she unloads her full damage a bit more slowly. That's great. That's not what she wants to do. Unhit base damage at uh, max stacks 10 to 66 at levels, or 1 to 18 scaling, to 4 to 48. So they're gutting her there. On hit ratio at max stacks, 8 to 16% total attack damage to 16% bonus attack damage. All right. Um, Aurelia tends to build extremely tanky in her later items because she has a kit that if she ends up committing inside of a team fight and she doesn't have the tankiness going on for her, then she's going to have a pretty bad time. Um, the, don't let these numbers deceive you at all. This is... This is really, really gross. So anyways, attack speed uh, attack speed at max stacks, 20 to 40 scaling to 30% to 50%. So I think the only universe where Aurelia getting a dagger at max stack is going to matter uh, is going to be in small isolated skirmishes with no one else around. So I think that that's a complete joke. Um, I think that the entirety of her kit uh, was mostly centered around her hitting her E, hitting a proper R, knowing how to engage, marking the correct targets, utilizing her Q properly. She could be chained. She could be held down. If she messed up her, uh, you know, her defiant dance, then she would end up getting punished extremely, you know, hard. Um, she had good matchups because there's other problems in mid lane right now that enable her to be as strong as she is and get away with being completely unpunished. I think that this isn't a byproduct of Aurelia necessarily being super busted or overtuned like a certain champion is in mid lane. Um, do I think that she might have needed some nerfs? Yes, to a certain extent. Do I think that she needed to have these kind of changes done to her? No, I, I don't think that completely gutting a champion that you just released um, makes any sense. Uh, does it mean that Aurelia won't be picked anymore? I mean, she, she still has utility inside of her kit, which obviously can't be denied. The problem is, is that when other champions end up rising up, or if they end up getting buffed and coming into the meta, they will fade her out of the meta because she will then be lacking the exact core identity which made her strong. Her oppressiveness doesn't necessarily just have to do with her own numbers and her kit. It has to do with the lack or the absence of other champions in mid lane that could bully her and that could pressure her because they were inherently weaker than her. So I don't like the approach that they're taking to Aurelia. Um, these changes don't do anything. Flawless Duet, 6 seconds to 5 seconds. Vanguards, add 6 to 5. These are irrelevant. Um, these are massive. Uh, obviously, this impacts her a lot. So I, I, don't, I don't know what they're thinking here. Um, I, I absolutely hate seeing changes like this. So... Now let's move on to Kindred. W now correctly scales with items. W no longer reduces monster attack speed. Kindred once again gains stacks of Hunter's Vigor from moving and attacking. Wolf's Frenzy. Kindred gains stacks of Hunter's uh, Vigor from moving and attacking. When charged, she will heal for 32 to 100 at levels 1 uh, to 18 based on her percent missing health. Um, so I don't uh, know exactly what the percent missing health is uh, because I haven't looked at Kindred's new updated wiki page. Um, but with this being said, this is obviously a massive buff. Uh, she didn't care about Wolf reducing the, the attack speed of the monsters. If you're kiting properly and you're not just idly AFK inside of the jungle, then you're going to have a good time. Um, she can kite very well. I think that her sustain, and I think that with uh, the other types of buffs and changes that she's received, uh, I speculated that I wasn't entirely sure where Kindred would end up, but if other changes keep happening to certain junglers, and depending on how the meta ends up going, then we could potentially definitely see Kindred making a return, which wouldn't be all that bad. So, I think that this change is absolutely in the right direction, and this is one of the few changes in this patch that I really like. Lucian, attack damage growth decreased, our damage amplification to minions decreased. So, the big thing to note here is that he's basically losing a longsword, uh, so when you factor that into a late-game teamfight or something, maybe he's going to end up missing 
two auto attacks uh, worth of damage, um, or three auto attacks or something. It, realistically, with the way that Lucian fights, the way that he kites, the way that he maneuvers and handles himself and stuff. So that's what you're, you're looking at there. Are the calling damage amplification 400% to 200% is irrelevant because there's very few instances where you're using the calling um, to just simply push the lane and that you, you need to make usage of the time that you're doing it uh, and that you don't have the mana to cure, you don't have the mana to soften them up with auto attacks or W or whatever else. So uh, this doesn't really matter. Um, and then this just uh, affects some of his... C oh, obviously this affects his CSing, uh, I think, to a certain extent. Um, in laning phase, maybe it builds up to half an auto attack or something so it doesn't really come out there but late game definitely you'll you'll feel it pike uh health growth decreased armor and magic resistance growth increased enr base damage decreased at later ranks enr damage ratio increased so um originally i thought this was going to be great until i realized that they were taking a ruby crystal away from him and then i just sit there going what the fuck um armor growth four to five magic resistance growth 1.25 to two um taking a ruby crystal away from him and giving him what not even a not even a solaris locket uh not even a solaris locket is just really 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 bizarre um i think that having his resistances be high because this is why pike is taking aftershock for the most part um having those high resistances it enables him to be some weird version of like tank echo meets bard and i think that's really where his identity shines i think that it's a uh, quite concerning that he's not able to obviously build health, and obviously you can understand that if he was able to build tank and build health and stuff, he would be tank echo on crack. Um, so in that regard, I, you know, I, I hoped that they would just buff his resistances, um, but instead they actually, they just mixed it up a little bit, and I don't like that. Um, base damage on Phantom Undertow, 95 to 235 scaling, 95 to 215 scaling. I think that that's fine. Uh, damage ratio 0.8 bonus attack damage to 1.0 bonus attack damage. Our uh, death from below, um, so the, the real thing that you're going to be looking at here is these numbers. So it's, it's going to have 10 added and then it's going to have a 0.2 bonus attack damage. So um, you'll have to be more careful with Pike now, uh, but if you do end up playing better than you are rewarded, um, so in, in that regard, they're, they're aligning him more so with like Bard uh, or a Thresh or something where if, if you manage to hit all your skill shots and you set up correctly, then you'll be rewarded. I still think that the champion fundamentally uh, has issues within his kit inherently due to his numbers makes it very difficult and the onus is really on uh, the, the player to find exceptional plays and make things work. And I think in very specific instances he's able to work, but I do fear that eventually he might fade into obscurity, much like how Bard did in the past. Uh, once people get more comfortable playing against him, uh, playing around him, and how he coordinates in the early into mid-game transition, and obviously the lane phases, so it's pretty much that. Um, simple buffs. So this is where it gets really confusing. Uh, Drunken Rage, this is actually one of the really big buffs, but it has nothing to do with Drunken Reach. Um, Gragas gains an additional 50 range for his next attack. Um, this doesn't really matter because when, when you're utilizing Drunken Rage, we're not going to be utilizing it up in top lane, or at least I hope to god that we don't see top lane Gragas return. Um, but cooldown 8 to 4 seconds scaling to 5 seconds flat. Uh, so the reason that this is so good uh, is because this helps him inside of the jungle so much by having the, the flat 5 seconds, having those 3 seconds shaved off. In late game, he's not going to care about W, because Gragas late game is more so caring about his E body slam, his cask, the correct engage, and then utilizing the Q for slows. The W is sort of like a novelty, and there's almost going to be no instances where the one second you're casting it off cooldown 24-7 and trying to make use of it. The only champion that would maybe be affected by this would obviously be top lane Gragas, in which case the payoff for the additional 50 range is obviously something that it doesn't want. So in that regard, it, it, it's a nerf to late game or top lane Gragas late game, um, but it's a buff to top lane Gragas early game and obviously a massive buff uh, for support Gragas and jungle Gragas. So... Uh, Jargon the fourth. Passive now has a minimum damage equal down decrease to early ranks. E damage increased to early ranks. Passive. Martial cadence. Now does a minimum of 20 damage. I didn't know what it did before, coach, by the way. Uh, e Dimashi and stand. 13 to 11 seconds scaling to 11 seconds flat. So, um, at max CDR, uh, Jarvan is still going to get the same exact benefit from the items, uh, before. 
But because of the way that Jarvan uh, skills his points and everything, this change will definitely be felt early on, um, especially in the mid game. The mid game is where it, it'll be felt most notably. Um, is it going to magically make Jarvan come back into the meta? Uh, I think it, it potentially could because the jungle meta right now is drying up to a certain extent. Um, and if changes continue to persist in other lanes, we could end up seeing a resurgence uh, of Jarvan. Um, and the meta can do this really funky thing uh, where other champions disappearing or entering can cause for champions that were previously bad uh, that didn't really get massive changes to magically just be able to come back because of the way they fit in. Often you'll you'll see Sivir uh, be a byproduct of, of this. Uh, you'll see Sivir appear in similar fashion. Jinx, uh, Q, rock, rocket bonus damage can now crit, W ratio damage increased. Rocket crit damage 210% to 220%. Critical strikes now also double fish bones plus 10% bonus damage total 210 to 220%. This means Storm Razor due to 216% crit. W zap 1.4 total attack damage to 1.6 total attack damage. I haven't seen Jinx in a very, very, very long time. Uh, so I don't know what her total AD is uh, late game often, uh, or around the three or four item mark where the mid game would be transitioning into late game. So I'm not entirely certain of how much damage uh, this is adding. If she can hit two um, in the later stages, then I guess it amounts to probably like an auto attack or two uh, in a late game team fight. But I don't think that these are really the changes uh, that Jinx needs in order to come back into the meta. I think that there's other problems that are affecting bottom lane right now. Um, th uh, and when I say that, I don't mean that, oh, Bruiser bottom lane, I'm not talking about that. Um, in fact, I just did a, uh, an excellent video, I think, with Thorin, uh, should be out soon, um, where we, we talk all about bottom lane uh, as well with Kelsey. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, people can watch that, and that'll explain more about the bottom lane debacle. Um, Jinx is not a part of the champions that I think uh, should be getting played in bottom lane. Um, and I don't think that these changes uh, alone will be able to propel her back into the meta. So um, now let's move to Callista. E damage ratio increased. Damage ratio per spear after the first, plus 20 uh, to 30% total attack damage to plus 20 to 35% total attack damage. She's getting 5% uh, total AD um, added into the rend. Uh, obviously, that's. I mean, this is big for Callista. The problem is, is that Callista is only still situationally good with some supports uh, down there in bottom lane. Um, Callista wasn't as hurt as some of the other champions, um, primarily just because of the change to Blade of the Ruin King. Uh, the gold that was taken away from Blade of the Ruin King, and then traditionally because Callista goes Runon's Hurricane second, um, she wasn't as impacted as some of the other champions. So when you combine the two things here, I mean, the, the problem is that Blade of the Ruin King does not give a lot of AD, right? So you won't, I mean, you, you'll feel this for sure, but it is important to note the other changes that are happening around Callista that can really make her potentially come back into the meta. Um, so obviously she's still really good down there with Thresh and whatnot, and I think that situationally she is a viable pick. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get to see some more Callista in LCS and potentially LCK. Um, okay, so the change I am most excited about, like this is by far the best change I am so happy about because I love the champion. I love busted kits. I love Zoe, um, even though, you know, I, I, I've talked about many, many times that Zoe needs changes and stuff. Um, I think that there's ways to approach Zoe to where she's not completely broken, but she's fair. Uh, she's in a state where people have to play around her and whatnot. Kassadin is another one of those champions with the kits that are beautiful. Um, so the, the difficulty with Kossadin historically is when his numbers are out of control, um, you have a very, very hard time doing stuff uh, to him. Um, he becomes a dominant force inside of the meta. Um, he can also arise as a champion that is an answer to the meta, um, and he can definitely be an answer to some mid lane problems that you know the meta might be having. So. In that regard, um, the changes that he's experiencing. Another blade, zero mana to one mana. This means that he can now stack tier. Um, now, normally, Kossadins will just go Rod of Ages into Lich Bane, and they'll get their boots, and then they're good to go, and then they go into Zanyas. Um, historically, a long time ago, there used to be the Seraph's Embrace build. Um, there also used to be the No Boots Kossadin in Season 4, uh, where you would just circumvent boots altogether. You'd get tier, you'd get Roa, and then you'd pop off. 
Um, I think that with the Seraph's embrace and the changes that Kossadin's had over many patches now to his Riftwalk, his mana and stuff, and the changes to Seraph's and whatnot, um, I also think that that can be a, a good viable build path. I think that Seraph's embrace is underutilized um, on Kossadin. I, I think that people uh, don't appreciate it as much as they could, um, and I think they, they like the raw power and utility that the Roa into Lichbane ends up giving, because it gives him the CDR, gives him a a lot of mana uh, in order to safely glide into the mid game, and that's often where he can go off. And if Kossadin can go off in the mid game, then he's going to be able to accelerate too far ahead and be too oppressive because of the nature of his kit in order for you to resist him. But I think in cases where he can take a more slow and controlled game and he has the Seraphs embraced, he can go Riftwalk City uh, late game with Force Stack. And so here, Force Pulse gets 0.10 AP, Riftwalk gets 0.4 uh, ability power added to it. Now, the important thing to note here is that he's going to Riftwalk many times uh, inside of a, a fight. So you're going to have to factor that into the damage. Um, getting the 0.20 ability power, not even entertaining the Riftwalk, um, is massive because Kossadin is a champion that can go upwards of 400 to 600 mana, or 400 to 600 AP, depending on what his itemization is. And so just being able to gain access to that kind of extra damage is super, super, super big for him uh, because it helps him with his assassinations. It helps him getting onto those champions that are going to be squishy. Uh, another thing that this does is because of the changes that was made to HP in the past and whatnot, Kossadin's level 6 and level 7 um, and 8 even are going to be stronger. Uh, he's going to have better thresholds for lethals on some champions. So I, I really, really like the costume changes. Oriana, W uh, cooldown decreased, so 9 seconds to 7 seconds. Two entire seconds shaved off is really, really, really big. Uh, do I think that it can make Oriana come back into mid lane? Uh, I'm not entirely certain. Um, the thing is, is that we saw Jarvan get buffed this patch. We also saw Gragas get buffed. Um, Pike is currently in the meta. We have other engaged supports and other engaged champions right now. Um, so the, the dissonance cooldown going down is really big because normally you wouldn't get access to this until level 8. So the fact that you have two whole seconds shaved off and the fact that your Q cooldown, which you're maxing first, um, this means that you can combo them and poke uh, a lot better. And then obviously this impacts Orianna's second blue buff and it impacts her ability to dictate the pace of the lane. Um, I think if the meta ends up setting up correctly and the junglers do end up coming back that are going to be good for her, we can see Orianna end up making a return. Um, but there are still mid lane champ because other champions that used to cause Orianna problems are not being seen that much uh, in mid anymore. Um, so in, in that regard, Oriana might end up coming back, because with Aurelia being gutted, that's really, really, really problematic, um, and it dramatically affects the mid lane. So we'll have to see what happens to Zoe, um, and what, what goes on there. Riven. Health region increased, R cooldown decreased to early ranks, that doesn't matter. Um, you know, uh, the people that play Riven, they, they play her situationally. Um, I think that she entirely is just a solo queue champion, um, because there's other champions that do what she does, but better. Um, it should be noted that with the change to Atrox, uh, the old Atrox, the way that we knew him, is gone. Um, and so that might mean that there is a spot opened up in top lane that is not just going to be Fiora uh, or Darius for an AD carry type champion. Um, the 7 health region per 5 seconds, when, when you think about it and you think what it means for her first lane, this is only going to affect her first back. So you have to ask yourself what matchups was Riven good into where this is going to impact her sustain up until her first back at level 5 or level 6. Obviously in competitive, this is better than in solo queue. Um, our Blade of the Exile, uh, 130 to 60 second scaling, 120 to 60 seconds. So I've talked about stuff like this in the past. Riven's ultimate is not one that you get up and you magically say, okay, I'm going to go. Um, Riven has to dance for positioning. She has to earn her way into the opponent. She often is reliant on having flash or an opponent making a misstep. She needs to have her E up. She has to have everything ready. And often she has to be able to take enemies by surprise. If they know that Riven is coming, they're able to play around it. And so because of that, nerfs uh, or buffs uh, to champion's cooldowns are not really that impactful. So in this regard, um, Riven, is th this is a placebo. So... 
Uh, that's all for Riven. Uh, Tristana, E damage ratio increased. Uh, 1.10 attack damage to 1.98 bonus attack damage scaling to 1.10 to 2.42 bonus attack damage. So this is obviously really big um, for Tristana. Uh, she almost gets 0.5 bonus attack damage on a four stack uh, explosive charge. The question is how often are you getting the four stack explosive charge inside of team fights? Um, and then you have to ask yourself, uh, what other things are gating Tristana from being able to come back into competitive? I made a tweet uh, a couple of weeks ago now, I want to say about two and a half, um, that I think that champions like Varus and Twitch and Kog'Maw and Tristana and Ezreal and stuff, Kai'Sa and whatnot, um, are being underutilized. Um, I've seen Tristana a few times, um, and I think that if she can end up reaching the late game, then she is indeed useful, uh, but there are definitely better champions that just simply outclass her and can coast their team into better positions in the mid to late game transition than what she currently offers. So unless she ends up getting some love via some sort of rune changes miraculously or other buffs or itemization changes, don't expect to magically see her pop back into the meta, even though I do think that if the meta gravitates back towards the traditional ADC bottom lane, then she'll probably be a low A tier pick or something. Um, so, okay, trend mirror. E cooldown decreased at later ranks. Uh, e spinning slash, 13 to 9 seconds scaling. So, when you think of Trindamir, um, you think of one-trick uh, players on North America or Europe, maybe. Um, you don't really see them all that much inside of Korea. Um, you think of a champion that is gated by a million problems. You think of a champion that uh, historically liked to build some of the crit items and then, you know, occasionally would build Eye Edge, and so all of his items actually got increased, except for the Trindamirs that go Blade of the Ruin King. It means that he comes online a little bit faster. And so the only Trindamir that actually got buffed there is the Blade. Uh, the, the blade variant of Trindamir, um, which is awkward in itself. Trindamir isn't useful and competitive, um, and when, when we're looking at e-spinning slash, I mean, there's probably going to be some, you know, enthusiasts of this that are like, oh, great, now I have to auto one less time to get it after a spin or something. I, I don't know um, how this actually impacts his passive with the, the cooldown reduction and whatnot, but this isn't going to magically make this champion come back because he has a million other problems and uh he is definitely not the king of anything so e twitch damage ratio increased 1.5 bonus attack damage to 2.1 bonus attack damage because so gets point uh six bonus ad um the problem is, is when you think of twitch you think of blade of the rune king you think of rune on hurricane you think of infinity edge um and then then what uh then you can sometimes think of yumu's ghost blade um, you think of getting Guardian Angel on him and whatnot. Twitch is not the champion that has massive AD. Um, in fact, you know, usually his, his first items are not centered around attack damage. So even though the, you know, the bonus, the 0.6 AD is still 0.6 bonus AD for his contaminate. So it can't be scoffed at. I think Twitch is viable. Um, I think that he can be picked. Situationally, I think that with the, the teleport meta and other stuff that's going on, I think that it can be fit into team comps. Um, I've been vocal about how the change to Blade of the Ruin King um, can help him, uh, because people might remember that uh, the old Twitch build that used to go Blade into Runons or whatever, um, even though for a little while it ended up going uh, Runons into Blade, and then I think Runons into Eye Edge. Twitch's spike comes on um, way later. Uh, so when he does eventually make it to Infinity Edge, he's stronger than anyone remembers. Um, so if, if you can remember Twitch historically as a champion, um, just imagine that he's even stronger than he was before, as long as you can get there. So I think that there's a massive payoff, uh, and people should be able to look to utilize Twitch in competitive and solo queue. Stay away from the champion. Just stay very, very far away from the champion. Um, okay, simple nerfs. E. Camille... Uh, base damage decreased. Hook shot, 75 to 255 scaling. They're taking 15 damage off it, okay, at rank 1. This is... Then, then they take 25. Then they take 45. This is a lot of damage. This really, really hurts Jungle Camille. It really hurts top lane Camille. This is, this is an overshot, I think, for nerfs. I don't think that Camille was in a state that people were complaining about her. I mean, maybe some people. I think that it was good that she had the option to be able to be flexed into top lane and in jungle. I think that tra taking dramatic measures like this and taking 45 damage off of her, uh, or 55 damage, I'm sorry, at rank 5, is beyond... It, it, it's beyond... Like, th this is the same team that puts 0.25 seconds on Zoe 
And then they do stuff like this. And it's just, you, you have to wonder who's sitting at the table and suggesting these things because it just doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, Dr. Mundo, E attack damage reduced at later ranks. Masochism, 30 to 110 uh, to 30 to 90. So loses 20 AD late. Um, this is impactful, uh, but you have to ask yourself how many auto attacks is Mundo getting in late game, and then you just do the math there and you factor in resistances and stuff. It is impactful. It's not why Mundo's being picked. It's not why he's popular right now. The changes that he received uh, elsewhere, you know, a long while ago, the way the itemization is right now, the way the meta is right now, the fact that there's not a lot of champions to gate him and champion uh, like 80 carries or stuff that are very, very good at shredding him. You know, they just stand still and blow him away. Um, they're not present. So Mundo is becoming a little bit of a menace because the meta lacks answers to him, not because his kit or anything is completely overtuned. Of course he's going to look overtuned when he's going up against competition that's not meant to go up against him. Q, Master E. Uh, bonus damage to minions removed, Q mana cost decreased. I talked about this before um, where I was very disappointed that Riot did not allow the My Tarek uh, or the Master E Tarek, uh, Nunu Karthus and stuff to live longer before even trying to touch it in any way. Um, I think that it was a really healthy thing for League of Legends. I think that there was some definite risks to doing it. I even think it was harder to pull off um, than it was to stop. Um, I don't like that people weren't allowed to explore ways to stop it and punish it um, before measurements started being taken uh, to answer it. So anyways, no longer deals bonus damage to minions, uh, 70 to 90 mana, to, uh, and then the cost is down, um, which it, this doesn't affect uh, jungle yi um, all that much. This does impact top yi or mid yi, but you're not really going to be seeing them. Um, these changes are, are not impactful enough because he's not getting gated by mana often enough. Uh, no longer dealing bonus damage to minions is obviously a big deal. I mean, obviously, jungle, jungle Yi is still there. Um, lane Yi's, while they will appreciate this, they'll obviously hate this. So, um, D Nunu, W attack speed and ability power decreased. W ability power ratio added to both attack speed and ability power scaling. Blood Royal offers too much base value regardless of how well Nunu is doing. Attack speed 25 to 50% scaling to 20 to 40% scaling. Okay. Um... All right, attack speed ratio, 5% bonus attack speed for every 100 ability power. Well, Nunu's not getting ability power, so that's just, it, it's stupid. Uh, ability power, 40% to 20%. That is massive. Uh, ability power ratio, 5% bonus ability power for every 100 ability power. This is a joke. Um, so they added in this so that the people that play AP Nunu down there in bronze or they, you know, they get it in ARAM and stuff, they're nodding their heads, they put the lollipop in their mouth and they're like, okay, I can, I can do with this. Are you, are you, uh, 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 uh. Um, what they don't realize is that this gates the entire purpose of why Nunu is being picked competitively outside of the Master Yi or, uh, the Tarot comp or whatever else. Um, I think that the utility that he did grant... Um, and those instances are being lost, obviously, and as the meta continues to change and more junglers come back in and whatnot, Nunu will gradually fade out of relevancy. I mean, he was only relevant because of the whole Karthus thing. Um, Nunu's been absent for a very long time, so when he's been absent for so long, why don't you consider maybe changing up something with his consume? Maybe make his consume have to last hit. Uh, whatever it is that it ends up doing, and then buff it in that way. Then you take away the whole Karthus thing, because Karthus doesn't get XP anymore. Uh, you do something else to Nunu, where uh, if, he, if he's blood-boiling a target or something, they get reduced XP. I, I don't even know. Um, I think there's infinitely other ways to approach this, and this just seems like a very sloppy way of uh, attacking Nunu. So... Hopefully he's in for another rework, uh, which is really, really unfortunate because I, I, I think that you can just do things um, with him, with his snowball, with his R, or with his E, or something of that nature uh, in order to make him better. Orn, base health region decrease. No! Uh, base health region decreased, W size decreased, uh, 9 health per 5 seconds to 7 health per 5 seconds. This is big, but it's fair. Um, It'll only affect his first recall. Uh, everything after that, it's not going to affect. So it will make Orn more susceptible uh, to getting solo killed in lane. Um, and there, there will be, obviously, a, a way to hit him. Um, so more timings there. Bella's Breath, Flame Width, nerfed by 50. Flame Length, uh, down 550 to 500. This is actually really big. 
Um, and the reason that I say this is really big is because a lot of people, when they're inexperienced against playing against Orn, you can often tipper them with the Bellows Breath, uh, with the, the mark, and then you can throw out the Q at the same time, and then you can dance for a little, and then animation cancel the E, uh, and you can often surprise them. I do think that the change to the flame length is going to impact that. All in all, I think that these changes don't uh, affect why Orn is being picked, and all that it ultimately means is that you do just have to be a little bit better um, at utilizing him. Um, so I, th I think that's it. I think that's fine. The, I, I, I like this change because I think this is, this is actual, genuinely balanced. Um, singed, E, maximum health uh, damage decrease. Singed, I haven't been seeing all that much. Uh, so I, I don't, this comes out of sort of left field. 6 to 8% target's maximum health um, to 4 to 8% of the target's maximum health. And then obviously because you're not maxing fling, this is 2% of the target's maximum health early. Um, and then I'm, I'm not super familiar with Singed on when he starts putting points into E. I'm going to assume second because I don't, I can't see a universe where he wants to max his ooze. Um, so the thing that's interesting is that Singed was already hit uh, via the minion dematerializer nerf. Yeah, Singed ended up having a lot more problems at level 3 uh, that he didn't have before. And so when you're taking away some of his damage, in addition to already gimping his laning phase, and then you take the stats granted away from him uh, on his insanity potion, and not a real potion, time warp tonic no longer grants movement speed during insanity potion, um, I really have to question what's going on. Because I, I fail to believe that, you know, playing at low MMR, that 2% on the target's maximum health is going to magically make some sort of a big impact. Uh, I do think that Singed is suffering in other ways up in top lane, and I think that he was almost at a Point where he actually could have been balanced, um, provided that they, you know, if, if they gave him something with dematerial, like if he had access to dematerializer again, or if they did something, like maybe they changed this up, they put a little bit more damage into his Q, so they made it so that you actually had to utilize a combo, um, or you know, maybe make it so that if he flinged you into his ooze or something, it, it made up for the missing damage. Some something in that regard, I think would be fine. I think that just the straight out gut is really really sad. Um, okay, Tarek. E base damage decreased, uh, E armor ratio increased, R cooldown increased. Okay, uh, base damage 105 to 285 scaling to 90 to 250 scaling. So he loses 15 at rank 1, um, and then he gets 0 0.3 bonus armor to 0 0.5 bonus armor. So obviously support Tarek gets uh, love here, um, but... This is really strange because I, I don't think that these are the type of numbers that magically make the Tarek uh, Master E or the Tarek something else um, that problematic. I, I, don't, I don't think this is the way to truly approach it. W Bastion uh, fixed a bug where W Bastion was granting more armor than intended. Okay, Cosmic Radiance, 160 to 100, uh, 100 second scaling to 180 to 120 second scaling. Um, interesting to note, uh, this is actually a window. Um, and the reason that I say that it's a window is because if, if, if it is going to be the mid Tarek strategy going on, uh, this does grant you 20 seconds to pounce on them if they come into mid. So in a way, it, it's an inverted version of um, rather than you saying, okay, I got to go. Like we have our ultimate. We're going to go utilize it off cooldown. The opponents can actually be like, okay, he doesn't have his ultimate. If he shows, we pounce. Um, and, you know, some people might think, well, couldn't that same logic just be applied for other champions that have their ultimate, you know, uh, reduced or something like in the past, Malzahar, Riven? No, absolutely not. Um, because it is not as pivotal to go on them as it is with Tarek, especially when they are portraying that or they're utilizing that strategy, um, that these types of seconds can actually impact because there are very small timing windows that are granted to you in order to punish them and, and get massive leads. So uh, in that respect, I do think that this is definitely, uh, this is good. Um, not sure about this and whatever. So, okay. Uh, Vladimir, E damage decreased when charged. So he loses 0.2 ability power. Um, I think that's fine. I think Vlad will still be picked uh, for why Vladimir's picked. I don't think that he's going anywhere um, with a change like this. Obviously, this does hinder his bottom lane presence uh, a little bit, um, especially in, in some trades, and then obviously his top lane presence. I think that in mid lane, it's often pretty difficult to actually hit your Tides of Blood, so I don't think that you're really going to feel it all that much inside of mid lane. You'll definitely feel it in some of the 2v2s, uh, but that's it. W, uh, damage ratio decreased, W movement speed duration decreased at the ranks, W spell thief, 0 0.7 ability power to 0 0.10, 0 0.10 on W, movement speed duration. Now, please note, when Zoe, you know, gets access to this, okay, 
So it's going to be the same at rank 1. All right? And then going all the way forward, the only time that it's really going to impact anything is what is this? Like level 12 or something? This is is this 12? Is this 12 and 13? This is 12 and 13, right? Zoe's more of a problem before 12 and 13. So I swear to fucking Christ, so, some riot, some, someone on the board, right? Someone sitting at the round table, their fucking daughter's named Zoe or something. Like th this champion is just named after them. That's why the champ will never go away. That is why these nerfs come in. This is going to satisfy some people that end up reading this. Now it's not quite 0 0.25, but how many patches has it been? Maybe they multiplied by four. You know, maybe, maybe that's where they came up with one second. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but this is, this is insane. I love it, though. I love seeing Zoe. I think that she is so fun to watch. And I was, I, I remember being very vocal when she originally got nerfed and everyone saying, oh, this is the death of Zoe, that once people learn how to lane with her again, and once people learn how to trade with her again and coordinate around her and pick her uh, and utilize her strengths, she'll become a monster. And she did. And I'm glad. And I hope that she doesn't go away because when Zoe's numbers get hit, the way that Kossadin or LeBlanc have been hit in the past, champions with absolutely beautiful kits, Tank Echo, um, then she's gone for good. Uh, then she completely just fades into the shadows and she never comes back. So uh, I hope to see that not happen. Uh, items. Gwinsu's Rage Blade. Attack damage and ability power per stack decreased. Percentage uh, damage per stack 4% uh, to 2 point. <sighs> oh. Um... I mean, it's still okay. Uh, that's weird. That's just really weird. I don't, I don't, I didn't see any other changes that would make sense for this. And you, you can't say that it's just because of Kai'Sa. Cog and Varus aren't even really getting picked. So Kale's not picked. What other Gwinsu champions are? This can't just be because of Kai'Sa. If you're going to do this, why don't you just gate Kaisa's numbers? Why does everyone else have to suffer? This makes no sense. Just hit Kaisa's numbers. Why does every other champion have to suffer? People are mentioning Atrox right now without realizing that he's been reworked. This makes no sense. Hit Kaisa's numbers. <laughs> That's how you balance it. You don't make... Five other champions pay a price because one bitch is just out of control. And now, you know, maybe one day, far away from now, they're going to buff Kaiser or something to compensate, and they're just going to completely forget that other champions got hit. So, right, you know, this is fantastic. I mean, or what you could do is you could buff the other Guinsu champions. You could buff Varus, you could buff Kogma, you could buff Kale. And then it, it sort of balances out that way, but then you're balancing around an item rather than just tuning the champions to accommodate to the item. And I, I just don't understand this. I don't, I don't understand why Guinsu's Rage Blade is in this patch instead of Kai'Sa. Makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, this is just really weird. Rune, domination style bonus with precision 13, ability power 7.8. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this will... Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's what's... Okay. Yeah, that's the... Thanks. Hail of Blades. Out of combat cooldown decreased. Maximum time between attacks increased. Uh, out of combat cooldown, five seconds to four seconds. That's kind of big um, for how powerful it can be when utilized correctly. I'm wondering if it's just approaching superior... Uh, like, if, it, if it's approaching just outright being superior... Uh, than lethal tempo to some champions, but uh, maximum time between attacks, 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds, um, that's cool too. That, that means that you have even, I mean, you get more usage and they can't just run away from you. Uh, I mean, it's only half a second, but that, that's noticeable on, on the champions that will be picking this. Uh, I still don't know who would be picking it. Um, I don't know if it, I, like, when I think of like Twitch or something, maybe he still just does need Fleet Footwork. Maybe he can't even go Lethal Tempo. Maybe he can't go Hail of Blades. Um, when I think of Nocturne, um, you know, how much does this benefit Nocturne more than the attack speed from the Precision Tree uh, on the Lethal Tempo? Um, how much does this impact Kindred? Um, or something of that nature. I mean, I can see it impacting Kindred quite a lot because she tends to bounce in and out of fights. 
Um, yes, she does remain stationary when she's inside of her ultimate, uh, so she's not going to get the out of sec the out of combat cooldown there. Um, but I think that the ways that she ebbs and flows uh, in mid game and early game, I think that this can definitely be utilized by her. So in that regard, I think that it's you know okay. Unsealed Spellbook. Uh, unique Summoner Spell Cap decreased, cooldown reduction per Summoner Spell increased, overall available cooldown reduction at max sums unchanged. Okay, uh, 8 to 6, I mean, th these are fine changes. Uh, early game Snowball. We've been making changes to the game all season to encourage early action. We're happy with the increased interaction. It's driven. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun having, uh, you know, sub 15 minute games on Korea lately. Now that players are more likely to fight, it's gotten far more likely that the game snowballs out of control too early. As a result, we're looking to dial back on how easy it is to get rolling in the first place. Specifically, we think that the laning phase should determine the tempo of the rest of the game. Whether one team is on their back foot or pushing to take more advantages, but really, uh, show the laning. Okay. Death timers, uh, decrease to early ranks. Great. So the Warwick that failed to get 100 deaths um, will be able to potentially achieve it next time. Uh, you know, so I, I think that he's reading this and he's salivating. So, you know, we got that going for us. Uh, 10 to 22.5 uh, seconds at levels 1 to, 6, uh, 1 to 6 to 6 to 16. Great. So people can get back to the lane and die quicker. Uh, death timers, level 7, 25 seconds to 27. Death timers, level 8 plus unchanged. I don't like this. I think that if you mess up, you should be punished for it. Um, I think that you should... Uh, I, I mean, the, cha the change where this impacts the most is 80 carries with teleport uh, and junglers. Um, because now killing junglers means that you have less of an opportunity to potentially go in for a deep invade uh, to either get vision or counter jungle the opponent. Um, and then obviously 80 carries that are able to teleport back to the lane sooner uh, if they end up dying at level 3 or 4 or 5. Um, this is quite big, uh, being able to teleport and potentially pick up three more minions or something. So in that regard, I really, really, really do hate it. However, if teleport ends up getting changed in the near future and ADCs no longer have that going for them, um, then I think primarily it's only going to be affecting junglers. Okay. Bounties now start at two kills. Bounty gold increased at all levels uh, of kills. Okay. Ba uh, two kill, bounty gold to 50, three to six kills, 230, 325 at three to six, 300 to 500. Okay. Uh, level six. Wait, wait, wait. A bounty is a reward to a team that takes on the champion has been pulling ahead. Essentially, it's the way uh, we make it worthwhile to keep fighting even when you're down. Currently, those bounties don't often kick in until it's too late. Uh, fighting from three kills down is pretty terrifying. We're introducing a level two bounty. Jesus Christ. I mean, okay, you should get punished for messing up, but this is, this is a big blowback. That's interesting. Outer turret gold. Uh, global gold reward decreased. Gold reward 100 gold per player per uh, per player per turret to 50 gold per player per turret. Um, this is fine. Uh, we want the landing phase to determine which lanes are ahead or behind, not which team is ahead or behind. Um, the large global outer turret gold reward is a little too tilted towards the latter, so we're reducing. I mean, it does give you an entire minion wave, um, but often when you take a turret, you're likely to lose uh, another wave. So for the person that takes the turret if they didn't already push in the wave it's sort of neutralizing that but whatever uh jungle non-buff large monsters don't worry guys you still wait what immolate bombing cinder cinder hulk in hunter's talisman can now kill non-buff lo Ooh. okay uh non-buff camp large monsters this is actually really 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 good and this is a big change um so I like this. This also means that you can run away from the, the camp when it has very little HP and you can let the burn finish it off. Uh, so it can actually speed up some champions on the map very situationally. But you have to ask yourself, what Bami Cinder uh, champions are going to exist? Well, maybe Gragas ends up coming back. We've seen Sejuani getting picked up a little bit lately. Um, Jarvan is definitely a champion that might end up going Bami Cinder, but with the change to his E Demacian stand, if he can get access to Warrior... Um, and then like Black Cleaver or something like that, then he has a lot of CDR to work with. Um, Rek'Sai, I guess, uh, is a champion that can obviously make use of the Bami Cinder. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking of competitive, competitive uh, viable champions. Um, and the fact that it works on Talisman is obviously fantastic. So there we go. Um, inappropriate name detection buffed, great. Uh, that's what I need. How about uh, inappropriate gameplay detection? You know, I, I find it really fun when someone AFKs and uh, doesn't do anything. That would be really great if we could get that detection buffed instead of fucking complaining about someone's bad name. What? Like, this is a fucking joke. They're laughing at us. They're mocking us. They know about the trolls. They're just not doing anything about it. This is insane. 
This is, this is, this is where the real importance is. Holy shit, I'm living in the fucking Twilight Zone. Demonetize, remonetize, bug fixes, bots. All right, we're not gonna look at that. Um, okay, so upcoming skins and chromas. Uh, God King Darius, God King Garen. All right, well, I didn't see any buffs to Garen, so maybe he'll get buffed next patch, uh, because otherwise the skin probably just doesn't sell. Um, except for like the diehard fucking Warhammer 40k players that probably play Garen because he's this hulking brute that just looks like a very masculine representation of everything that they wish to be. Um, but Darius is obviously getting some love right now, so I think the skins are pretty cool. Um, I think that both should actually end up selling. Uh, the two are the, my favorite skins that have ever been made by Riot, uh, from what I have looked at it. Um, but I do hope that Garen gets a buff so that the skin can sell. So maybe in 8.14, uh, we'll see some Garen buffs. So anyways, Atrox. Um, oh, it looks like a Gundam. Oh, this, is this actually looks like a Gundam. This is pretty cool. This looks more on par with uh, Gundams. I never watched Gundam as a kid. Uh, I was more of a Dragon Ball Z uh, type person. So the people that watch Gundam, you know, it's a little bit weird, but it's probably people that don't even know what the hell Gundam is. And now I'm just, now I'm feeling ancient, you know? It's like, do you kids remember Scooby-Doo? Do you remember Ronin Warriors? You know, if I told you, do you remember Tom from Toonami? You know, and tears start dripping down some of our eyes as we listen to this right now. And they're like, what's Toonami? And they stick the lollipop in their mouth. And I'm like, no. Do you remember when Toonami killed Tom? That was one of the most, that's one of the most fucked up storylines of all time. I'm like 10 years old or something. I'm watching Toonami and I find out that Tom's been killed. I'm like, what's going on? Tom from Toonami died. That, that hurt me as I cried. I remember I wrote a letter, which my uncle and my mom probably never mailed, right? But I wrote a letter really just vocalizing how angry I was at Toonami because they killed Tom. They brought him back, you know, but he just wasn't the same, you know, they, spoilers, but he just wasn't the same. Anyways, that is it for the uh, patch rundown. So let's just recap one last time to really just put into perspective how everything is. Um, so Aurelia changes are LOL. Uh, Kendra changes, I think, are in the right direction. Lucian change kind of makes no sense, uh, but whatever. Uh, Pike change, uh, I think that it's nice for now. Um, although I, I really, really despise the, the health growth change, losing a ruby crystal. I think that's ridiculous. Um, I think that it's nice for now, but once he gets figured out, he will fall into obscurity just like Bard did. Uh, Gragas buff I like, Jarvan buff I like, Jinx buff is... I don't know, are they trying to sell skins? Um, Callista change is really good. Welcome back fucking Kossadin. Alright, this is like welcome back Carter or something. Um, Kossadin's back. Uh, Oriana is likely back depending on how the meta shifts around her. Um, I think that this is actually a really, really big change that you can't overlook. Uh, th this is a lot of damage. This translates into a lot of damage later on. Um, so that's nice. So anyways, Riven, uh, irrelevant. Uh, Tristana, doesn't really matter. Trindamir, I mean, you'd think that they were going to have a God King Tremere skin. Uh, e, Contaminate, I, I think that Twitch is actually good. I think he is not being picked. I, I don't think that people are researching Twitch enough, um, and so he'll take a buff. Uh, Camille is a complete, you know, not a hook shot, it's an overshot. Um, you know, this is this is on par with Zoe 0 0.25. Uh, Dr. Mundo is a byproduct of the meta lacking his answers, not his kit or items or anything like that being overtuned. Um, so, you know, a few patches down the road, maybe Mundo just, you know, he falls away too. I think that my client just went offline because it's 6 a.m., yes. Uh, Master Yi, don't like that they changed him. Nunu, I don't like that they didn't just make his Q, make it so that he had to eat a minion. Um, people were not picking Nunu. Like, we saw Nunu Azir once upon a time. People were not picking Nunu for the blood boil. You're doing this because of Nunu Karthus. No other reason. There's no other reason to do this to Nunu. You could have just made the Q, make it so that it has to last hit the minion. You could have made something like blood boil does not grant experience, uh, you, you could have done something like that. Uh, targets with blood boil, or allies with blood boil, uh, cannot get experience from monster creeps. There were so many other ways to approach it. This is a total letdown. Orn, really good balance there. Singed, don't understand why they approached it this way. I think that's a joke. Tarek, don't really care. Uh, Vladimir, I don't think it impacts him enough, so that's a placebo. Zoe, I mean, someone's daughter is named Zoe. Uh, Gwinsu is just out of left field. Kaisa should have been hit. Uh, Varus, Kogma, and friends, especially because Atrox is gone, they should not be forced to suffer um, because of one champion. Um, this is just... This is just something else. 
I mean, do they really sit there and look at these numbers and be like, you know what, that, 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 that's a good idea, guys. Yeah, okay, yeah, let's add two ability power. Uh, or let's add 1.2 attack damage. Uh. That's... Someone sits there and fucking says this. This actually makes it to the patch notes. They, they sit there, they like stroke their beards and they're like, yes, 1.2 attack damage. Yeah, that'll, that'll really do it. Uh, Hail of Blades uh, needs more research, uh, maybe uh, pre uh, prevalence on uh, Kindred or something. Uh, Unsealed Spellbook doesn't really matter uh, because it's falling out of popularity. Um, and there's also only a few champions that used it uh, anyway, so whatever. Uh, early game snowball, I think the death timer thing is a complete joke. Uh, obviously, if ADC has stopped taking teleport, then I think that it mostly impacts the jungler um, because it, it, it makes it less so that you can be punished if you end up messing up. Um, the bounty thing is just completely out of left field. Outer turret gold, I think, is irrelevant. You're, you're not going to magically lose games because of 50 gold per player per turret. Um, I think that the changes here with talisman and stuff is absolutely great. I think that this is just mocking us at this point. Um, yeah. All right. So that was it for the patch rundown. I hope that you hated it as much as I did. Thanks for watching.